Ladies and gentlemen, I am the American Spy Fox. Welcome to the channel. What you're about to see is raw footage from my trip to Washington in conversation with Gary Cobain. I have chosen certain sections, certain pieces of our conversation to show to you now. Some of these sections and other sections will be interwoven throughout a documentary that I've slowly been working on. It'll all culminate, as you know, the 30th anniversary. I wanna put out my homemade documentary, which is a passion project. The trip that my supporters were so gracious to send me on has been documented. It is being turned into a whole documentary. I got to go to Chris Novoselic's house, Kurt Cobain's house, Buzz Osborne, Dale Crover's house where the Melvins practiced. I got so much perspective on these guys' lives and how they grew up. But I did want to share with you a conversation with Gary Cobain so you can see exactly how he feels about his nephew's early demise. Again, it's raw footage. By the time that I got confirmation, yes, you can come over and meet Gary. I'd already filled up everything I was recording with, including two extra 32 gigabyte micro SD cards. The only thing I had left was this little HP laptop. So when the documentary comes out, you'll see that some parts are 4K, some parts are, uh, we'll just call it lo-fi grunge film. I'll try to spruce it up with some filters and overlays, but you know, it's kind of uh, authentic. To me, it just seems authentic. Again, it's raw footage. You're gonna see sections of this pop up along with interviews from a lot of other people in the documentary. For now, I hope you enjoy. I will be uploading an American Grunge News episode with my co-host Marie. I've got another Kurt Cobain video that I'd like to upload as well. Furthermore, I built a website. I've launched the website. Unfortunately, it'll take a couple weeks before it comes up in Google's search engines. We'll be putting articles and videos there that YouTube has removed from my channel uh, and future videos that YouTube will either block or, or you know, demonetize or, or say it's not within the guidelines. On my website, I can say what I want, right? So that's coming soon. Captain Lowe did get a hold of me a couple days before Christmas. He said he's going to be traveling a lot throughout the holidays. He would get a hold of me when he's home. We'll do another interview. Thank you guys so much for being patient with me. We've been real busy. I finished a book. I don't know what I want to do with it. I don't know if I want to maybe shop it around and see if there's a publisher who would publish it or if I'll just put it for free digitally on my website. But I will link an article I wrote um, about Nirvana. It's the only article on the website right now. If you'd like to read it, it'll be in the description below. Well, you guys know. I always put links in the description so you know where to find stuff. Here you go. In conversation with Kurt Cobain's uncle, Gary Cobain. All right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> sitting here hanging out with Kurt's uncle, Gary. Who I have to ask, what is that? What? Is that a sword or a knife? A knife I made. Oh, sweet. That's a drawer you made that? handle. Yeah, drawer handle. And I used an inner tube. An inner tube. How did you weld it? How did you... Uh... I slammed it down in there. Threw some shit in there. Wow. So you you actually put that together yourself? Yeah. This is all me. pitted and rusted really bad. Yeah. I worked on a row. I, I was interested. I remember watching this video you were in with with that the, Scott. I was telling you about him. You said something like you broke Kurt's arm or something. Yeah. What, what was up with that, man? Well, it, I was on my back and I was shooting him with my feet up in the air. And he was trying to go higher, higher. Oh yeah, I remember yeah, that like, when you were a kid. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. We, my, gonna, my siblings and I used to do that with each other. Went a little too high. That was the last time I got the babysitting too. <laughs> his, his mom got mad. Yeah, his brother too. Yeah. Well, you know how moms are. <laughs> Did, I, has has um, have you ever? And we don't have to talk about this if you don't want to. Have you ever watched the movie that movie Soaking Bleach? Mm -hmm. You haven't watched it. It's like some guy, some this guy named Benjamin Statler put it together, and he like interviewed all these different people including the private investigator, Tom Grant, that mm -hmm. was hired by Courtney or whatever. 
And man, all these guys are were like convinced. That, yeah, that keeps, some, kept some, going back to her. Everything kept yeah, going back to her. I got the police her. report. I got the autopsy report. And my dad sent a letter. My family could get it. Yeah, I got all that. I I had heard. I, did did Leland think something weird? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I thought. I I'd seen old like old interviews, but I didn't want to pry. You know what I mean? There's a I have to say that I I've been researching it for a long time, and it does seem like something weird happened. Like I don't know what to say. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you were telling me when I first came here, you you said that Kurt was going to quit the band. Yeah. And I had heard that he was, you know, he did the acoustic <laughs> album. Yeah. And then I had, there were rumors he was going to um, go into more like softer music, like melodic stuff. And he was going to play with the art guy from R.E.M., Michael Stive, and all this. You think there was probably truth behind that? He really was? Yeah, but, yeah, he was getting tired of all, you know, being pressured like that. Yeah. Finally. All right, I did something correct. Ladies and gentlemen, Gary Cobain, once again, um, we have just been sitting here kind of listening to some recordings of Courtney and uh, Tom Grant and Courtney just ranting. I'm an idiot. Gary and I were recording. I didn't have the microphone on like a dummy. And he's probably sick and tired of my questions by now because I've asked about three or four times. Your father was a believer that, you know, because your your dad was kind of a gun expert from what I understand. He knew his weapons well, and he, it really bothered him that there were no prints on the gun. That that seemed to be the big thing for him. And the and, uh, and your shotgun is pretty long. He was going to have a hard time trying, yeah. to, trying to shoot himself. Yeah. No, he got to be fucking, uh, fucking shotgun, 20 gauge. It, it wasn't long. No Kurt was a lefty, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I read that um, because the world is designed for right-handed people. Oh, it, re- yeah. it really is. I I read that when he was young, your your brother tried to get him to use his right hand as well because he thought it would be easier for him. Well, I because broke his right arm. Oh, <laughs> maybe that's, that's why. why that's maybe why that's why he started using. Change to the left-handed. I think. Yeah. Yeah, he probably did. Yeah. He probably did. He's like, he that's interesting, stuff. man. He he would have had to start using his left hand to do stuff. Yeah, maybe you're the reason yeah. why he became a lefty, dude. Maybe. Yeah. Was he a do? You, do you think he was a? Was he a fan of Hendrix? Do you know Hendrix was a lefty? Yeah, yeah, and he had play. He has his strings upside down on his guitar and everything. Mm-hmm. And he's, I think he's from Seattle, ain't he? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Wow, I never thought about that. So, you, Gary was telling me just yesterday when you, you know, when you're kids, you, um, we used to, what did we call? It? We called it like Superman or something. You like oh, I forget what put we your feet it. feet yeah, in the you air. Sit down, put your feet back, and he sits on your feet. Yeah, you yeah. Him, shoot him up in the air. <laughs> so he hard, he I came guess. down the wrong way. Yeah. You went all the way up to the ceiling. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> well, I bet he remembered that, though. My my boy just broke his foot in a football game and kept playing like an idiot. And then, you know, his foot, like we see his... Well, his mom sent me pictures and stuff. But um, he, he wanted... It was a playoff game, and he wanted so bad to stay in the game that he didn't tell anybody... He broke his the bone that goes to your pinky toe. Mm-hmm. He, he he fractured it, and he was just like, "Fuck it." Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he probably made it worse. Yeah, I heard shit like uh, Kurt was into Evil Knievel, and he'd like jump off his mom's house on the mattresses and shit. Yeah. <laughs> like you know? stupid things. Yeah, the things that kids did to entertain themselves. I guys, I. I wanted Gary to listen to some those phone recordings, and because we've had a lot of conversation about about Kurt, and I, I think Gary and I both, you know, nobody knows for sure, but I, I think we both sort of agree that 
there's just too many details that suggest. Back to Courtney. <clears throat> yeah, isn't it funny that not only is there all these coincidences, they all come right back to her. When I went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, remember I told you his uh, the original death certificate was yeah. in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah. That had been auctioned through Julian's auction house, and um, the owner just loaned it to the museum for a certain period of time. Like someone actually bought it, mm -hmm. you know. But that's pretty common. People bought El, you know, Elvis, Marilyn Monroe. Pe people often do purchase things like that. Uh, Leland, Gary's father, had to request this mm -hmm. because yeah. only family yeah. members can have it. Yeah. And so he had to write a letter, and he's got the letter here, and I believe it was 2012. Mm -hmm. So he so he did not obtain the full. I, I guess it was just called an autopsy, right? Yeah. The, uh, autopsy report. Okay, medical examination. Okay. He did not obtain the full report until. Oh man, I got I didn't have the camera pointed at you until 2012. So that's geez, eight, 18 years went by before your family actually got to see exactly what happened to Kurt. That's crazy, man. So the the one thing I just wanted to glance at Gary is uh, the the list of the the toxicology report. Um, you've probably read this, haven't you? Yeah, I've been through it. Yeah. You, did you know that the guy who did the autopsy was friends with Courtney? No, I didn't. You didn't know that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nicholas Harshorn. They they've been friends since the early '80s. No, really. Yeah, he Nicholas Harshorn. He was a rich kid. He was a trust fund kid. Obviously, mm -hmm. he went to medical school. He was into punk rock, and he actually promoted Courtney Love's first husband's band. Oh, yeah? Uh, her first husband's name was James Moreland. He had a band called Leaving Trains. This guy funded the band. He, he should have never done Kurt's yeah, autopsy. Really. That, that's a conflict of interest. Yeah. By the way, he ended up uh, dead in an accident. Yeah. He moved. He quit his job, moved clear to Florida, and then died jumping off a cliff. Yeah. Yep. Later. <laughs> uh, yeah. So he he also did Kristen Pfaff's autopsy, um, which he he shouldn't have done either one of them because if you're a friend, if you know the people, you, you shouldn't do that. You know they call it a conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. I can't find it, Gary. Here I'll let you find it. Where the the list of the uh, actual intoxicants in his system. If uh, you know, if I were you. This is an original copy. I would keep this in a safe if I were you. Um, yeah. I mean, I know nobody bothers you out here, but um, there are people in this world who'd pay a lot of money for this, especially experts. Oh, wow. Codeine, diazepam, nordiazepam, uh, mono Settle morphine, morphine by RIA, uh, benzo diazepines. He had a whole laundry list. Yeah. Whoa. Mixed, mixed one point five two milligrams. Yeah. And the the see the the diazepam. Excuse me, the benzo diazepine. I think it's diazepines. Mm. Those were found in the root beer, which means somebody put them in the can. Yeah. Not that you don't get. I asked. I've asked several medical professionals about this. I even went to Grays Harbor Community where Kurt was born and yeah. asked them. Yeah. And they said, if you took them and then got backwash in the can, it would not register like this. Yeah. So someone actually had to put pills in his root beer. Hey guys. I just wanted to, this is a section that sort of confused patrons. I want to make this very clear. Obviously, right here, I'm looking at a diagram. In the typed section of the autopsy, they describe how they removed the liquid from the can, the root beer itself, and had it tested. And then these 
is either benzodiazepine or diazepam. Maybe they're the same thing. You tell me. Were found in the liquid. Okay, this isn't. They took a cotton swab, swabbed the rim of the can, and discovered this. They describe how they removed the liquid, tested the actual root beer itself. This is just one of many reasons why I cannot understand for the life of me why no investigation ever happened. Why they didn't say, whoa, 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 hold up. What, what addict would do this? They would either pop them, swallow them, or they would crush them, right? And then they would do it through the nose or whatever. I, I've never heard of anybody. I mean, I don't know for sure. You guys tell me that are more aware than I am. I don't know for sure, but I couldn't see anybody just like dumping stuff in their root beer and then drinking it. I mean, maybe you tell me. Because they were so quick to come to a verdict on the very day he was found, I think they were too embarrassed once they discovered these things later to say, oh, crap, we have to go back to the public and say that we screwed up the investigation's still ongoing uh, We and delete that verdict, right? Nope. They were just like, eh, whatever. Nobody will, nobody will ever see this. Nobody will ever read this. Courtney will keep it private, right? Th yeah. My God. And it is true. 1.52 milligrams per liter. That's, a, that's like enough to kill a horse. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. What? So he had two needle puncture wounds, mm -hmm. both arms, and he had a Band-Aid over one of them. He, he had abrasions on his legs or on his right leg. Can you read that? Do you know what that says right there? I can't. I can't tell it either what it says. Um, I guess it's not important. Uh, band aid need it. Yeah. Wow. I wonder what the abrasion on his leg came from. Wow. I wonder what the abrasion on his leg came from. Mm -hmm. I'd never heard about that. No. And the and um I I hate to say this go in so much detail, but the skull was not penetrated. Yeah. So and I'm sure if it you know, had it been buckshot, if somebody really wanted to do themselves in, they would have used buckshot. Yeah. Uh not bird shot. Doctor, you know, Dr. Sewell Weck would love to read this. He, he's never had the full report. Would you care if I just read the first part here? Oh okay. Um, on April 8th, 1994, received a call at King County Medical Examiner's Office approximately 1,100 hours regarding the presence of a death at 171 Lake Washington. I left at 1125, so he took 25 minutes to leave. I was in the company of Dr. Donald Ray, and at the scene we were met by members of Seattle Police. Don Cameron is in charge. Mm -hmm. He's the one who told reporters, he was the chief, Don Cameron was the chief detective who told reporters that they were on the scene of a suicide. Yeah. And they didn't even invest, they haven't even investigated yet. Huh. <laughs> Because everybody said that he was on a suicide watch or whatever, you know. Yeah. And his mom. And because, uh, well, because Courtney uh, filed the missing persons report and said he was. And, his mom and did signed it. it with Kurt's name. Yeah. You knew that, though, right? Mm -hmm. You already knew that. And by the way, there is a Tom Grant recording where she admits that she signed Wendy's name. Oh, yeah. This is what I wanted to read. Okay, it says, um, garments on the front of the body are open and consist of a white, blue, and yellow patterned long-sleeved button-up shirt, a white cotton type t-shirt with two black figures inscribed on the front, a pair of blue denim Levi button-up 
fly jeans, which are appropriately fastened in a black leather type belt. So here's what's weird, Gary. Um, they describe all of his clothes, but Courtney, in an inter in two different interviews, she said that he died wearing a corduroy jacket, a brown corduroy jacket, and that she washed blood out of it. Hmm. But there's no, no nothing in there about nothing that. in here about a brown corduroy hmm. jacket. What the fuck? Um. Well, but the human face, right? This is interesting. On his right hand were three rings: a white metal ring with a green stone, a white metal ring with a black stone, and a yellow metal ring. On the left hand uh, is a white metal ring and a yellow metal ring. I never knew any pictures I've seen. I never seen Kurt wearing a bunch of rings. Uh he did though, didn't he? Apparently, I've not seen one. You know, you married ring on him. That's about it, and some of the things. Yeah, I don't remember seeing any other. I've ne Gary. I've never even heard this guy's name, and I I've studied this case for a while. David, right here, David Delgado. The body is searched by myself and investigator David Delgado. I've never even heard his name no, mentioned. I, uh... I've heard it Jim Yoshida and Don Cameron. Uh, I, apparently, I just missed him. Present in the right front jeans, $62. Uh, left jeans pocket, miscellaneous papers. Oh, wow, he had the Delta Airlines passenger receipts, the flight tickets. He had purchased two airplane tickets. Oh, no, th these are the ones from Los Angeles mm -hmm. to Seattle. Is an, is an airline ticket from Seattle to Los Angeles, dated 30th of March. And it goes on to talk about the, the Remington 20 gauge. Plastic papers located to the left of the body containing a small residual Black four and blah blah blah. Man, I wish I had that. I wish I had that recording to show to you about when Courtney says I wash blood out of his jacket. Yeah. I mean, pe people have commented on like it's in a it's in a documentary about her. Mm -hmm. It's called like Courtney Love is Back or something <laughs> something stupid like that. And um, she show she even has the jacket. She even shows it. She says, "Yeah, I washed blood out of this." Mm. There's no mention of no, a no. brown corduroy yeah. jacket in that no. autopsy. No, that's very strange. Thanks for letting me see that. Now yeah, you write the people's name down, or can you get a hold of them? I don't have, yeah, I don't uh, have no computer or nothing here. Oh, you don't, man. Mm -hmm. Shit. Oh, well, I can help you. I feel like more of Kurt's family should have. Um, you know, inherited stuff. Yeah, nobody got nothing. That's what I figured. And unless nothing. it was well, Wendy did because she played oh. Courtney's games. Yeah, Wendy did. Kept her no. mouth shut. Nobody else. I wonder what Wendy Kurt thought. Gave Chad a guitar though. Oh, that's cool. And everybody in the band signed it, and he's already been offered like a million dollars for it. He won't sell it. That's pretty cool of him to do that, man. Okay, yeah, because that'd be very tempting. Um, I know... One... Fuck, what that one guitar go for, he played on... Uh, did you see... It? Oh, Unplugged. Unplugged. Dude, Dude, six, six million. Six million, o Over man. six million. And yeah. broken up ones. Fifty grand and stuff. Oh, yeah. There was one that... Uh, another one of his guitars sold for over four million. Yeah. And then there was they, they, he had a bunch of them. I think one like sixty thousand. Somebody just the same auction house I'm talking about. They just recently sold a guitar pick that Kurt signed. For, oh yeah. For like fourteen thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. For a guitar it. pick. Yeah. So um, I know uh, you know what talking to subscribers if interested, Gary might be interested in perhaps parting with the original copy um if so make an offer yeah otherwise it'll probably go to if he so chooses to he'll probably go to julian's auction house where they'll auction it off i mean you know Cor courtney's auctioned off anything she could think of yeah i and i i feel like the cobain family should have got to fucking really know that i'm doing that 
Oh, you think she tried to get it from you? Try something, maybe. 